there friends! I just completed a seminar called Strong Leads Film Seminar. So basically for about five weeks a group of girls and gender non-conforming people come together and watch movies directed by women or starring women or anything like that. It was such an incredible experience and I want to give a little bit of a spoiler warning for the movies Aurora Sunrise, A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, The Unknown Country, The Watermelon Woman, and Thelma and Louise. So the first film we watched was called Aurora Sunrise. It was directed by, can I have her name pulled up? Saha Kian. That. I feel really bad that I can't pronounce her name because she is such an amazing director. And I feel like if I pronounced it wrong, that would be like an insult to her, in my opinion. This movie is about a girl named Aurora who escaped the Armenian genocide and became a silent movie star in America around the 1920s. While she thinks this is her chance of freedom, she quickly gets taken advantage of by the early Hollywood film industry. Y'all have to forgive my voice. I'm, I'm sick right now. This movie was like an animated documentary about the real life Aurora. When she fled to America, she was in a movie called Auction of Souls, which was supposed to be kind of her story story of how she survived the genocide. The directors of the movie decided to change her story completely, making it more suitable for American audiences. What I love about Aurora Sunrise is that it's so different from Auction of Souls and where Aurora actually gets to tell her own story. It features animated segments of her childhood, actual clips from Auction of Souls, and actual interviews with Aurora. Auction of Souls came out in 1919 and after a few years the entire film was completely lost. Aurora unfortunately passed away in 1994 and a little while later a few minutes of the film were actually recovered and used in this documentary. I think this movie was an incredible and very accurate representation of how trauma can affect people. It also used color in such an incredible way and I love just the whole mixed media aspect of it. After we watched it, we talked to Helen McDumian, which I feel like I'm also pronouncing wrong and I'm very sorry, who specializes in trauma, memory, and genocide studies. We had an incredible conversation about generational trauma, especially with victims and survivors of wars. The next movie we watched was one of my favorites. It's called A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night and it is directed by Anna Lily Amirpour. A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night is a 2014 Iranian-American film that takes place in a fictional Iranian ghost town called Bad City and it is described as an Iranian vampire western. When I first read that, I thought that was the craziest string of words that has ever been put together, but after watching it, I realized it was so accurate. Like, it's completely right. The story revolves around this girl simply named The Girl, who is the vampire mentioned earlier, but is really a symbol of female empowerment, which I think is very creative. The girl meets this man named Arash on one of her walks home. Instead of killing him, like she does with most men, she takes him home and they listen to music. Throughout the whole movie, he teaches her the sort of sense of connection that she's never really had before. There's a scene of them in her room that lasts about five minutes that I think is so melodramatic and so beautiful. There's just so much vulnerability of it and oh my gosh, it's just so, it's so good. I love it. Okay, this one truthfully confused me a little bit and that's not something I admit easily. I love understanding things, especially movies and books. I need to understand them. I was a little lost here. This movie is called The Unknown Country and it was directed by Marissa Maltz. It follows a woman named Tana on a road trip across the United States. She has been taking care of her grandmother pretty much her whole life and that grandmother just passed away, so she goes and visits her family in hope of finding closure. I think. The entire thing really confused me, but it was really beautiful, so it made up for it. There were multiple real-life interviews with actual people that I thought added so much to the film. It seemed like the entire movie, Tana was searching everywhere for closure, but when she finally decided to just to live her life, she finally found it. One interview that really stuck out to me was of this man who said he had seen a specific person in his dreams one night and spent months and months looking for him before he finally gave up and moved to this tiny little town where he finally met that exact person. It reminded me a lot of Tana's journey and it was a really good reminder that things are gonna happen when they're supposed to happen. Like there's no, there's no need to rush it. This one was probably my second favorite of the whole seminar. The Watermelon Woman is about an aspiring black lesbian filmmaker who is researching a black actress from the 1940s who is only ever credited as the Watermelon Woman. It's a mockumentary, which is so awesome for me because that's one of my favorite types of movies ever. It was directed by Cheryl Dunye, who actually played herself in the movie. This is, this is where it gets a little confusing, I know. While the movie was completely fiction, a black lesbian filmmaker named Cheryl played a black lesbian filmmaker named Cheryl. It was incredibly done though. It really felt like a home video type documentary because they kept messed up lines and other mess ups in the final cut. It just felt so authentic and I was really sad at the end when I found out it wasn't real. I wanted it to be a real documentary so bad. Okay, last one. This was my favorite. Oh my gosh. After I watched it, I went home, went on Letterboxd, and moved it into my top four movies. And that movie is Thelma and Louise. And I know what you're all thinking if you know directors like that. I thought Strong Leads is like supposed to be directed by women. This was directed by Ridley Scott. What's going on? I know. I know. 
but the Strong Leads instructors made an exception because it was written and I think produced by the incredible Kelly Corey. She's won Oscars, she's won Golden Globe, she's just incredible. She's an incredible woman. Thelma and Louise is about two best friends who wanted to go on a quick road trip together. Their plan kind of fell apart when Louise kills a man and they have to run from the police. It really is one of the best movies I've ever seen. And it has Cowboy Brad Pitt and Gina Davis in it. Who doesn't love that? Come on. The Strong Leads leaders had a huge surprise for us after, too. Everyone was just talking about the movie after we'd watched it, and out of nowhere, Callie Corey herself walked in that room. Is that not insane? She talked with us for about an hour about feminism and filmmaking, especially women's roles in the filmmaking industry right now, because women are very underrepresented in Hollywood. It was, it was literally incredible. I, like, still, I still can't believe it happened. There's, oh my gosh. And that was my experience at the Strong Leads Film Seminar. It really was one of the best experiences of my whole life and I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of it. The people I met there are some of the most talented people ever. Like they, oh my gosh, they're just incredible. And I got to talk with an Oscar winner. Are you, are you kidding me? What, what, what is my life? This is crazy. I 100% recommend you go watch the movies I just talked about because I gave a little bit of a rundown, but they are so incredible and they're by incredible people, starring incredible people. I so recommend you go watch them because they're just so beautiful. Thank you so much for watching this video. I, I really hope you liked it. I loved making it. I had so much fun. And be on the lookout for a lot of more movie related videos coming up because that's my plan. That's my plan. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye bye. And basically what that is, is, oh, that doesn't make sense. Talking about the movie, disgusting, disgusting, wow.